<clears throat> Come on in, greetings. Welcome. Thank you for stopping by here on TikTok Live. If you're logging in live, Come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're coming in and loving light, high vibes and positivity, <laughs> if you are, <laughs> don't mind me, y'all. If you are a decent being on earth, <laughs> decent being, all right? If you are a decent being, y'all know what I'm talking about. I speak this way because I'm poo-pooing over all these illusionary labels and things in which we subscribe to and hide behind without any tangible um, authenticity to things, okay? Because we all have an avatar we wear and we have labels, but decency is a core, it's to the bone, it's a frequency, it's a vibration, it's, it's who we become, it's who we are, it's what we do, think, say, wish, hope, Pray behind the scene and on camera. Okay, it's a state of being. So when I'm saying decent human beings, I'm not implying perfect. I'm simply saying folks that operate from the frequency of true love and light, not the commercialized propaganda of what we hear that statement being used like. But those who are truly operating in that frequency, anybody can stamp that on and copy and paste the whole motherfucker's life and repeat everything someone says. But I'm talking about authenticity, okay? To you all, I wish you well, okay? Because it's actually a warrior's path to be a decent being. It's a warrior's path to be authentic, okay? Anybody could follow the status quo Anybody can chase the lights. Anybody can do that. Selling out is easy. All of those things don't require any level of strength, any level of character development. It's the name of the game. So to the rare few far and in between the individuals out there that are actually being what they say they are on social media, to you, I tilt my hat off, okay, and I'm wishing you well. Sincerely, I don't need to be your BFF. I don't have to agree with everything about what you do in life. But if, if you are legit, this means you don't go about trying to wish harm on others. You don't go about sticking your nose in other people's shit. You know what I'm saying? You understand a level of boundaries and respect. Um, whether or not you fully agree with somebody. Okay. Now, <laughs> what I want to talk about. I wasn't, I wasn't a discussion, bitch. But... What I want to talk about is why do I, hear me out, why do I tell my son I love him so much every day and why do I do certain actions every day so, so much? I'm going to tell you guys some real shit, okay, here. So when you start going through the awakening, the dark nights of the soul, the healing, all the shocking truths and revelations, all these things that is inevitable will come up. You got to see some things about yourself and you're asleep in state um, that make you go, ugh. And then you're going to see some things about your kin folks and the people that you've been around that super make you go, yuck. And then you're going to realize, like, what type of, of parent have you been? But not only that, you're going to also realize the suffrage that, especially if you are a star seed or an earth angel and maybe your children are a rainbow um, seeds, whatever, you realize the cruelty and the attacks that they have been under from the world. You realize that a lot of the things you went through was due to people doing dark magic on you and your children. Um, even in terms of like their development or their struggles, you realize that they were being tortured and tormented just like you were. It was all a design. And so, and you know, basically to keep you stressed out and overworked and not understand what the hell's going on. But then in terms of, you know, whatever happens between you and your children or just all this shit, right? So I'm going to tell y'all why, why as of the last, I want to say year, 
at least, at least. As of the last year, like daily, I'm talking about consistently. Why am I in his ear and why I'm always squeezing him and kissing him on his head and all this stuff, right? <laughs> Which I'm going to tell y'all how he responds to this. It's going to make you laugh. But it's from my heart. It's because the love frequency is the highest frequency of all. And because I know what individuals are doing, I know what they did. They're going to pay for it. I'm not going nowhere until that's done. But not only do I know what they did, okay, I know what they do. Okay, I know the secrets. Okay, I'm fully and cleanly aware. And for this reason, I'm combating energy. So he's got a lot of hate projected towards him as his mother's son. Okay? He has a lot of evil eye and envy projected towards him as his mother's son. Okay? From the karmics in his own bloodline, my own bloodline, as well as those that are connected to um, individuals that were supposed to be a part of our journeys. So, I'm combating. I'm pouring. Okay, because the true love frequency coming from me as his mother and his guardian is like transmuting stuff. Okay, he's getting the anger, the hate, all, you know, motherfuckers, low vibrational motherfuckers. So, I'm putting it over. I love you, I love you, I love you. I'm proud of you, I love you. I'm squeezing them, I'm squeezing them, hugging them, kisses, kisses, his head, boom, bitch, right? And... Is to lift his frequency is so that he feels what the love frequency should feel like versus all this other fucked up shit that he's been subject to. Okay. And I've watched, I've been watching what that's doing. Okay. Um, I also play a lot of games with him. Even though he don't know I'm doing it, I'm doing it to get him in a certain energy. So I do this daily. Now, <laughs> it's important to do because I feel like we talk a lot about, you know, the releasing, the returning to sender and the, you know, all that stuff, which I consistently do because I mean business. But we don't talk much about, okay, the other side of it where you're pouring in like, okay, love, light, all the good frequencies, the feel good things that he should have had. He, it should have been, you know, he should have had this naturally by his own kin folks. Unfortunately, majority of his kin folks is like the majority of mine. Unfortunately. So I'm stepping it up. This is how I'm breaking curses because I'm doing what no one wants to do. Become the difference. Because it's not about quoting the scripture and going to a Sunday sermon. It's not about going to a Reiki center or, you know, all these things. It's about who are you? What kind of energy are you giving your children outside of buying Xboxes and putting shit on a post? Like, who are we? Are we being the difference or are we actually being the curse? Sacrificing your children for, for clout? Notoriety, the same old toxic shit that's been going on for generation after generation. Or are we standing to be what should have been? One that protects, fights for, and pours love and honor onto their children. Okay, true love and honor. Not willing to sell them, you know, sell them off so we can have some shit, bitch. Kind of shit. Anyway, I digress. So, I've watched him bloom. I've, wa I've been watching him. As I do this, he don't know it. He has no idea. But I'm, I'm gauging his energy constantly. Of how is this affecting him? Okay, because... 
that's happening. That's going to be. But me as his mother and his, his guardian, pouring it in constantly, consistent, consistent. And it's authentic, too. It's not the fake shit. Not the fake, uh, like, no. Like, I, I make sure that I want him to feel it. And so even when he's going, mom, like I'm going to tell y'all how he, he responds. Even when he's doing that and I'll sneak in his room and he on a computer or on his games or some shit, okay? And I sneak in there and I'll go and I'll try like to hug him and I'll be like, I love you. I'm so proud of you. Like kiss his head, or, like squeeze him. And he'd be like, mom. And then the recent thing he's done, which I laughed after I left his room, I laughed so hard. Um, he was like, okay, I really like, I could tell I was like getting on his nerves. But he said, he was like, okay, mom, already. You told me that you love me a thousand times already. <laughs> That's what he said. I started. When I walked out, I was like, dang. He's like, you said this so many times, mom. Okay. And then... When I'm hugging him, I'm like, give, give me a mother hug. I'm just showing you love and affection. And, or, or I squeeze him. And he said, like, okay, Ma, untouch me. You've hugged me enough. So, okay. <laughs> so, it's cute. It's actually cute. I, I prefer that. Because I know that I can see it in his energy. I can see it in his expression beyond just the things he said. I'm seeing that it's affected him in a good way. Um, things that he will remember as time proceed, you know what I'm saying, is going to now be superseding with love versus all of this weird nigga bitch shit he's been subject to. He will have better memories, better thoughts. I'm doing this on purpose. Okay, because it's about the mind. It's about the, the subconscious. It's about the thoughts. And when you've gone through a lot of traumatic events and low vibrational beings wanting to use that as a means of torture device to elicit the fear frequency, to elicit the trauma frequency, I'm fully aware about this. I'm alchemizing. This is why I play with him a lot. This is also why I allow him to win at a lot of things. So I'll do shit with him. In the house, sometimes I'm trying to like race. And so we're going back and forth. Um, like I told y'all, there's like this, this aisle where it's two-way. And so almost like hide and seek, like old school. So I'll be like peeping around the corner like with the big old goofy grin. And he'll, he'll have to like try to not smile and not laugh. And I see it on his face. Like he's trying to um, like not, you know, be cracking up because I'll be acting really silly. And, um, and then I'll try to race and woo. And I'll let him pass me. And I'll let him go. And so he would be like, yeah. And I'll be like, aw. And then I'll go back to me. Like, and I'll be like, I'm going to get it, Darrell. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. Watch. He was like, too bad, so sad, mom. You had a rough start. But I'm doing all of this to give him a sense, first and foremost, of autonomy, a sense of safety and security, a sense of feeling okay to um, express himself, to win. Um, I'm creating that even though he doesn't know that's what I'm doing. So when I'm gone, I have a whole plan. I'm doing this so that he, you know, he'll be set and ready to go and he'll have some good memories. He'll have a, a, a better foundation um, than the fuck shit we've come from. Okay, and I mean, I mean this. I'm not interested in just pushing some shit down his throat, but yet treat him like shit behind closed doors or don't honor him because I'm his mother. I'm not interested in that kind of so-called love. I'm not interested in keep being, you know, keeping secrets from him and gaslighting him, but I call myself his mother. No. Nah. It's 
stops with me. He will know. He will have experienced what it's like to have a decent mother. A mother that's breaking toxic cycles of family abuse, narcissistic abuse, religious abuse, spiritual abuse, financial abuse, sexual abuse, all these things that yeah, you ain't going to get too many families to tell the truth. This stuff has been going on far longer than most of us want to believe. I'm being the difference. Am I perfect? No. I've told you guys stories. If you follow me long enough, I was a child raising a child. I was a child that come from a toxic ass family raising a child. Okay? So I sucked. I super sucked. Okay, look at I'm I have to tell y'all the whole get up now. I sucked. I sucked <laughs> early years as a parent. Absolutely. Um and I had to don't think for one second that I didn't have to deal with that. I had to deal with that. And I also had to talk to my son over time, over and over again about things. And I had to be sincere and legit about everything that had happened, any and everything that seemed to have happened due to my poor parenting. And then I had to be the difference. And then I had to also still hold the frequency and understanding that just because you're the parent that's not that's not the ticket to be any old kind of way if you're wrong as a parent you're wrong and you need to own that too and not gaslight your kid or not pull some 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 card talking about whoop de whoop and then we wonder why we have children and adults' bodies that can't function properly in society. All this toxic conditioning. I had to face off with all that. But more than my words to him, Every day, I have to show up. I choose to show up as a parent that's going to fight for him energetically. Giving motherfuckers hell. Going to fight for him energetically. Going to fight for him spiritually. Going to fight for him physically. Going to fight for him, you know, to the full extent in which I can. And where I can't, involving my ancestors and my light team. To the death. Now that's apparent. Because it's not easy. It's not just I can go to Macy's or, you know, to wherever and buy a whole bunch of shit and make, make you know, that makes me feel like I'm a wonderful parent. <laughs> Yet neglect everything else that fucking matters. I'm a voice for him and people like him. That's a parent. In a world where this is not celebrated, understood, or appreciated, in a world where everybody wants to just subscribe to a religion and spirituality as if that makes everything better and okay.
Meanwhile, people are doing toxic things behind the scenes. And what is all that worth? See, I decided, not me, not my son. This stops now. We will not be sacrificed. I will not sacrifice my son for nothing and nobody for no connection, for no money, for no fame, no fortune, no notoriety. It will not happen. To me, the fact that individuals do that is just a point at their original core wounds that they have, whether or not they want to believe they have them or not, that this shit has been going on forever. So attached to this 3D. Willing to do anything. To see our name and lights. And then make it look like... <laughs> I'm sorry, T. Uh, Y'all, because this shit's been going... It's the same shit. It's just different dispensation. It's been going on forever. We're going to make it look like a tragedy and then we're going to be at the funeral and shit. Uh, get into royalties. Mm, 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 mm. Not here. Not me. Not my son. That's love. That's a good parent. A parent that looks at their mistakes, look at all of the things and the roles in which they play. And not only do they just apologize for it with some kind of blanket ass, fake ass, general ass, dry ass apology. They become the change, literally, sincerely, wholeheartedly, authentically, and continually. See, me telling my son that I'm sorry about my poor parenting as, as he was young and then or about the things I feel he was subject to as a result of my own sleep state and the things that I was around. Me apologizing for it without being different or changing is actually futile and useless and a waste of If I'm telling him sorry yet still a crummy parent, then really I'm basically manipulating. I will be the difference. I will stand for truth and justice whether society likes it or not. I will speak the truth. I will tell the story on behalf of me and my son, whether society likes this or not. They can crazy make me all they want. This is going to end not so good for individuals. That's love. This is strength. Because it ain't easy. I have to make that perfectly clear. You have to be willing to take what comes with being, being willing to speak truths that are not popular. That are not according to the status quo of the time in any system. The things people have worked so diligently hard to keep swept under the rug. You have to be willing to take what comes with being a truth seeker and a truth speaker. 
You have to be willing to take what comes with when you ain't willing to, <laughs> you see, make excuses for toxicity anymore. And I am. This is what I came for. Because all this other hoopla is illusion. Real curse breakers are doing the work and being the difference, not just saying it and then posting it on social media. They're not contradicting. They're not contradicting what they're posting. They do the work. They journey. They try to be as authentic as they can with their own failures and failings and flaws, but it's a true to life Dedication. Not just coming on here to talk about authenticity, but as soon as I click off this camera, as soon as I click off, I'm off dilly dallying up to some bullshit. Like, then, then what is it then, you see? I love my son. This is why he's targeted and attacked. Gonna wish they didn't do that. I told my ancestors, my spiritual guidance team, I said, well, this was maybe a week or so ago. I said, listen, I, I, I have no desire to communicate. And I was talking living and dead. Watch where I'm going. I said, all due respect, I don't have any desire to communicate dead or alive. <laughs> With that individual not one who was a part of hurting my son. And let me tell you what I told them why. I said, here's the deal. Eh, it's one thing for them to fuck with me. Eh, okay, to a degree. But an innocent soul like my son and people like him makes my stomach sick. These types of, of uh, populations that can't defend themselves, can't stand up for themselves, you know, it, it turns my stomach. I have no compassion or regard for people like that. Dead or alive. Nope. I asked my team, I said, well, you know, help me to do what I got to do to alchemize and release and, you know, forgive and all those things according to energetic and spiritual law. But um, I, there's no, they might as well just not even bother, bitch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I said, they might as well just go on ahead with the get up, dead or alive. I have no interest. Zero. None. And you guys could relate. I mean, because everybody's got their different areas of life where they kind of feel like that. Some of us is like, you know, if they hurt your baby or like everybody's got something where they go like, you know, it's one thing to fuck with me. You're going to wish you didn't do that too. But it's another thing altogether. When you're messing with pure souls or more innocent, vulnerable lives that can't, um, you see what I'm saying? I asked my ancestors, I was like, uh, let, according to the, you know, the otherworldly energy here, I'm like, um, 
So let it be. <laughs> they get what they deserve. Maybe that's their life lesson. See, I, I look at it from that perspective. It's like, hey, maybe it's, it takes certain things for them to work their soul's journey shit out. But, you know, because some shit you just, should, you just ought not be doing. And when you didn't cross over to that level of dark, you need that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for this reason, I'm guarding. I guard his energy a lot. And my ancestors stepped up some things for me. So that I can do that. So that I wouldn't have to be um, overly. Because they wanted me distracted and tired and worn the fuck out to where um, I couldn't awaken and heal. Not alone understand what was going on with my son or anything like that. They wanted me all over the place. All over the place, tired, working 12, 12 jobs just to pay half the rent. And, you know what I'm saying? They wanted Sorry to disappoint, but that's not my life. I've been granted. Do we have everything we want? That's, that's not really what I'm saying. I'm saying that I have been granted this, though, so, so I can give them hell. Give people hell. What do I mean by that? Disclaimer. My right to defend myself and my right to defend my son. And it's hard to do that for our children, isn't it? If we are, just think about it from a practical place. If we're like all over the place, if we're overworked, if we don't, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's more challenging. So I'm grateful for my ancestors helping and assisting in this way. Because my intention is to pour as much love, buffer as much as I can, as often as I can onto him. And those that are like him, representing, because I'm appalled at the things that I know about certain beings. I'm appalled. I am. Sorry. And how low and far, you know, beings will go for stuff that don't matter and that they can't, they can't, they can't take it with them to the afterlife. See, they can't take it with them to the part that happens once we're finished here with this earth school. People don't bank on that part. But I do. That's why I'm always trying to cheerlead or tell y'all like a broken record, like a broken record almost every day at some point. Where I'm advocating saying, wake up. Or I'm advocating saying, there's nothing that important. There's nothing. There's nobody. There's I'm advocating, pushing to get people out of stufers. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. There's nothing. That important. I want to be looked upon so why like starting to question all these things really really I heard a gentleman here on YouTube I, I think I actually follow him and I think he follows me but I heard what did he say damn oh he said um he said, not everybody signed up to wake up in this life. Something to that effect. I may, I may be misquoting him, but it was something to that effect. It's true. It's 100% it's true. Essentially, what he was trying to imply 
is like, don't waste your breath and your time. Like, just do you and be you. Okay, share, create, whatever this is. But basically, like, don't waste energy and effort with, you know, like the leading the horse to water, but you can't make, like, don't do that because some people didn't sign up for it. Like, they may not, their deal, they may have to go, you know, um, several soul rounds, if you will. Soul rounds before their contracts or whatever they do to actually awaken. And that's not our jurisdiction. This is why I tell people create and allow because we ain't here to bulldoze and be like, boom, bitch. <laughs> but I ain't, we ain't here to do that. It's actually a violation to their journey too. But those who feel drawn to you and hear what you have to say, then it resonates according to how it resonates. Okay, I know I'm a little off topic, but I thought I'd share that. That may be for someone. But I just wanted to talk about why I tell my son I love him so much constantly. Why I'm squeezing him and why I keep touching his head and kissing his head because I know what they were doing to his head. I know what they were doing. And I know who they are too. <laughs> well, they didn't bank on that one, my team, huh? All right, let's get, let's get relationship harmony, high vibrational living. Look it. Oh, see, this is why my guys are confirming that what I'm doing is to bring relationship harmony and high vibrational living in the bloodline, in the dynamics between parent and child where there's been like these, you know, you know, those of us that come from toxic families, we know it whether or not we want to tell people or not, okay? <laughs> Shit. We know, okay? Those of us that know we came from some really fucked up toxic family dynamics and that needs to change. And not just in words. But indeed, it needs to change. High vibrational, harmony, bringing balance, especially if there was a lot of like conflict, fights, jealousy, envy, death. People do this within one's bloodlines where other people, oh, thank you, light team. Thank you. Okay. Boom, bitch. Pause. <laughs> I, I, okay. See, this is why there's going to be some people collective that they can't understand this. And let me tell you why. That wasn't their experience. Okay? As far as they know, when it comes to family, they it's not their experience. So to them, family is safe. Family is trustworthy. Family is everything fam because their experience may not have necessarily been as grotesque and horrific as yours so when people have not had that experience to them it's just not making sense so they shake their head they don't want to hear anything like that because to them like no family will do such things no family will so give up trying to get people to understand that because it's always based on people's own perceptions and frameworks so they have a limited view and understanding so they may like nah nah yes yes And so they may question, collective, why many of you don't want anything to do with your, your kinfolk because to them it's like, but family. And for you it's like, oh, but family. You see what I'm trying to say? Based on experience. So thank you, ancestors. So what I'm doing, they're showing me that I've set some type of clear intention here, crystal clear intention for high vibrational living. And I did. From my higher self, I did. I set that intention to break that in, in this lifetime, no matter what it took. 
No matter who didn't like it, no matter what they did, what they said, crazy makes, triangulate, gaslight, bitch, all the shit, smear campaign, bitch. Like, no matter what they did, that I was going to do it. That I was going to change this secretive, toxic life, yet on a surface looking like supporters and helpers, yet stealing and, you know what I'm saying, hiring people and trying to kill people. Like, <laughs> hell, hell, man. So I said that I was going to be the difference and that I was going to pour that onto my son to change the dynamic between parent and child or young adult, How, you know what I'm saying? But it ha somebody has to, you have to do it. You have to do the work. You can't just be like Googling and start Google and pasting shit. You have to like, you have to be it. Do you guys think it was easy to say every some of the stuff I had to say to my son? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I can remember one time where when I was talking to him and telling him some things and explaining and telling him that it was wrong and I was sorry and I was trying to get him to engage on his level of understanding. And um, he, he had to see like my face, to see like the sincerity and to see... And feel the energy of like, I was like, no, son, this was wrong. I don't have any excuse. I wish. I wish. That this was done differently. And I'm sorry for subjecting you to this or subjecting you to this environment. And or, or whatever it was. Like, I had, I had to do that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> See, that's parenting. Parenting ain't just paying bills. It's not. It's not just paying bills and buying Xboxes. Because, see, people will try to typecast you as a bad parent if you can't do all that shit. And what does that shit mean? Nothing. I don't mean jack. Loving your challenges, maintain your positive state. So I'm showing him how to like deal with the challenges of life, which we go through as parents and just as beings on earth, how to deal with it, but not allow that to stop me from being a loving parent. And when I, when I see myself, thank you, there's the throat. When I see myself, veering off whether it's my attitude or whatever like this is the practicality of it my guidance team assists me because I'm open so they help me to breathe through and go okay this is how okay because this it's not these children's fault okay we decided to have sex and we decided to birth them okay I'm speaking in the natural sense I know esoterically we'll get into some other things but but naturally Okay, we decided to have sex and we decided to carry and we decided to birth out. We may not have known what the challenges would be, but that was still our decision. And it is not their fault if life was hell on earth. It's not their fault if they had some kind of challenges put on them due to dark witches and warlocks, hexes and vexes. Whatever the situation, you know, tragic, whatever. So I'm showing him. He's actually been able, getting to see up close and personal. Like what it's like to be with your parent. Go through the challenges of life, yes. Deal with hard times and obstacles, yet still have your parent love on you properly. And not take it out on you, which is what toxic parents do. Project their disdain for themselves and their disdain for their life's choices and whatever they created for themselves onto their children. I came here to end that. To break toxic family dynamics. 
Thank you, ancestors. Why I love my son. Why I tell him I love him so much every day. Why I'm always squeezing him and hugging him, playing with him, <laughs> trying to engage. If all y'all can see this shit behind the scenes, sometimes it's hilarious to watch. But I do it anyway. Self-love because I'm teaching them something. The importance of loving on yourself and taking care of yourself and being kind to yourself and saying kind things. No matter what the situation is. Uh, <laughs> it's not about just going outside. See, I, listen, to just come on. Hear me and hear me good. Me and my son have gone through various different seasons of life. We have had plenty and we have had little. But he's seeing and learning that it goes far beyond just going to buy some more shit. Because <laughs> you have to learn how to love on yourself when you're not able to do all of that. Or for whatever reasons. Who, do you love yourself still? Are you able to appreciate life and yourself outside of do you have the next iPhone? And my son's a techie more than me. And he's got expensive taste. Who she wins? Them games, bitch. I'd be like, oh, shit. <laughs> um, them games. I'm like, oh, uh-uh. <laughs> shit. But he had to, you know, experience. And he is seeing like, okay. Okay. It's more than this. I still like stuff. I still want stuff. But, love, right? And he gets stuff, not merely as much as he deserves, breathe and become aware. Yeah. Because like I said, coming from toxicity and hater, haterade blood and just weird energy, you know what I'm saying? He hasn't gotten nearly as much um, support, love, affection as he truly deserves, truly. Because people too call up on a on a weird shit. Weird. Call on the angels, yeah. This is what I did. Being Earth Angel myself, but this is what I did in terms of my team. Because I want to put this energy, I want to heal his heart, but I want to infuse that high soul energy in his field because he he's getting all of the other toxic shit, right? From weird motherfuckers. Soulmate. See, children are soulmates. And either we're going to be karmic, toxic in nature, or higher vibrational. I decided to break karmic cycles, you know, of, ha you know, karmic parents and just, ugh. They'll sell you off to the highest bidder, boy, I tell you what. Yeah. Cleanse and shield your energy. I'm teaching him about that. I'm protecting him. I'm teaching him the importance of energy. The importance of being around, ah. Being around loving energy. That that's priceless. That's something that we want to guard. Because you can be around people. A whole lot of people. It don't mean it's a whole lot of love frequency going on. You can be around people with a lot of stuff. But that still don't mean... That there's a lot of love frequency happening. You still will have haters in the midst. If you know what I'm saying, you still have to be mindful. So I've learned some lessons about the importance of surrounding self with loving energy. And if it's not going to be in that energy, I've learned the lesson of Queen of Swords. So I have no interest, and I don't care who they are, because I'm not going to be trying to fight. I spent years doing that. I'm not going to be trying to go back and forth with sleep ones. 
that's going to stay asleep. And that's hell-bent on not understanding. So it's like either they're going to be in right frequency, bitch, towards me and my son, boom, bitch. Or it's like, Arr! yes, look at, as soon as, <laughs> as soon as I said that, it's like, yes, I want to be outside, butterflies, bitch. Like, uh-uh, that's where I'm at in life. Yeah, love, waterfall of divine love. I decided to pour divine love. Yeah, so we can be free outside, bitch. Sunset, butterflies, bitch. We can breathe. She got to deal with weirdos, man. I'm done. I'm so done. <laughs> I'm so done. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. So, so, okay. The importance of grounding. Oh, I just heard something that I said to him the other day. And so, okay. So I watched my son. Um, he gets excited and frustrated with games. Because, oh, y'all just have to see him. Him and the games. Okay, bitch. So he gets, he be on one. <laughs> and I'll hear him. I'll be like, what the hell? And so, um... I'll go back there and I'll and I'm like, okay, so I used to, once upon a time, I used to um just try to stop him. I used to be like, yeah, I used to be frustrated. I'm like, it's just a game, whatever, like, you know, and just try to like shut him down. Because it's just a game. So I used to go in there and be like, dude, I'm gonna need, you know. And then my guidance team started helping me to realize something. That though I may not relate to that, it's really not much different than when I'm frustrated. And that there are times where I'm able to handle it more easily than others. But they show me how to show him. Okay? So what ended up happening was, so one time I, I went in his room. He was, you know, upset. He was, like, going off and, like, get at, his, at the uh, Nintendo Switch thing. <laughs> and uh, and I was calm. I just came in there. I was very neutral. I had a certain energy about me. It was on purpose. I did this. And I said, what's wrong, son? What's what's the problem? And uh, he was, like, <gasps> like, he starts telling me he's frustrated. He's like, this thing, I can't win. I can't get over whatever he was saying. I was like, oh, I see. I said, well, I understand. I said, it's okay. I said, it's okay you're frustrated. I understand being frustrated. I said, well, you know what? My help, I said, you could try. I said, you know, sometimes I take a deep breath. Because I was trying to match him. I was trying to talk to him in a way that I knew he would connect to me. So I said, well, you know, sometimes what I do, like, when I'm all upset and I get frustrated, then I take, like, and then I hold it and then I blow it out hard like that. And he said, oh, yeah. He said, I, I know how to do that. I know how to do deep breaths. I said, oh, okay. I said, so, yeah, but you can try that and see. He's like, oh, yeah. He said, so it's okay to be frustrated. I was like, yeah. And then so, then he was like, okay. He was like, well, thank you for that. Thank you for some shit. I was like, wow, never heard him really talk that way. But I was like, okay. And um, then I left. I left out of his space, out of his room. And then the next time it happened to him, and I went back there, he was like, see, Mom, I got frustrated, and I did take a deep breath. So are you proud of me, Mom? Because <laughs> like, that's how he talks. He was like, I did it, Mom. I was frustrated. And I took the deep breath. And so are you proud of me? I was like, aw. I was like, well... Of course. I said, I am proud of you. I'm glad you were able to uh, take the deep breath to help you. He was like, yeah, when I'm frustrated. And so I was like, okay. Why am I saying this? Because I'm showing him in my own unique way how to deal. I didn't go in there telling him, oh, get over it already. Like I used to. I just, I met him understanding that he's got frustrations just like I do. 
understanding that he can't always process or handle things easily just like I can't. So I just went in to be like indirectly helping him without feeling him feeling like I'm bombarding him or trying to tell him how he ought to feel. What am I doing? I'm breaking toxic family dynamics. I'm, I'm breaking toxic parent dynamics. I'm breaking all of those conditionings that are low vibrational and abusive and unloving in nature. It's discarding in nature. You're nothing and nobody. Oh, well, whatever. So I'm showing him that I care I'm showing him that I can hear him and listen. I'm showing him that I accept he's frustrated and how he feels about a situation. I'm showing him that I'm giving him space to deal with that. I'm also showing him that I'm giving him actual practical tools to help him if he wants to use it. Parenting goes far beyond paying the bills. Far beyond buying games and toys. These are the things we want to get to the core. These are the things we want to change. It goes far beyond getting in a marriage. Far beyond all this stuff. Core. Day-to-day -day dynamics. How do you do life when life is tough? Angel healing energy. So he watches me do a lot of things. He knows. He'll see me. I'll come in his room sometimes and he'll see me moving my hands. Or I'm, I'm putting in certain codes. Or I'm and navigating energy. He watches me do this. So he's, he's recording this. He is seeing like, okay, Hmm. He see me play um, Tibetan singing bowls, crystal singing bowls. He hears mantras. He may not know in a 3D fully, but he's watching and experiencing and seeing something as like um, how it affects the environment. So when things get weird because people are projecting shit, he watches me do something. Then he watches it change. So he'll have this in his blueprint, in his energy to um, changing the game, yo. It's changing the game. I'm not yelling over him. I'm not doing all of that. He, see, he's not seeing none of that. He's actually seeing something a little different. Emotional clearing. There it is. The trauma, the pain that he has had to live through, the shit that we carried. So this is a part of the emotional clearing. Not just the release, 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 the release, release, but now pouring in some love. Yeah. Love. Yeah, and then look, it came out. It came out. Okay, his mother, Earth Angel. I believe he's a rainbow. But this is me calling on my team and his team. Because I'm like, he's been just as traumatized as his mother. Okay, and while my Shekmet Fury energy is on full effect, big Big time. It's big. It's that Kali energy. Big time. Because I'm at the I'm at the point of like how dare people. How dare they? They gonna wish they didn't do that before they leave Earth. Okay. Because he didn't deserve that. He's a pure soul too. Yeah, past life experience. <sighs> Child, honey, child. Clearing the past. The repeating, you know, repeating 
toxic cycles. Nobody want to talk about. Everybody just, I'm telling you, it's, to me, this stuff is getting sickening. How everybody wants to put on these facades. It's like, it's almost, uh, it's ludicrous. I can't even find the words, man. Because it's like, ugh. That's how I feel. It's like, ugh. Like, you know, people want to have all these uniforms and outfits, but man. Be doing some crazy shit. Oneness. I'm teaching them about unity consciousness. Hey, activating Christ consciousness. Here we go. Where it's at. Synchronicity. Progress. Forgiveness. Overflow. Possibilities. Okay. Yep, there it is. And it came out. I'm teaching them about self-love. The importance of that. And when you really activate self-love, you're going to become a more loving person. You're, you're, going to, <laughs> you're going to conduct when you truly have this, and not the commercialized version of it, but when you truly operate from this true frequency, this is going to, as a um, product or byproduct of self-love, it's going to cause you to behave differently. This is the foundation of being able to even give true love. Not communal narcissism. Not empty fake love. Because the true love is going to have you in a frequency do no harm. That's love. Do no harm. Meaning you're not going to be violating people. You're not going to be violating your own child for gain. You're not going to be abusing their personal identification information. You're not going to be energetically violating them. You're not going to be um, disrespectful to them. You're not going to be selling them off to weird nigga bitch groups. You're not going to be... When you're truly here, there's not going to be any offer that can be made to cause you to want to harm Yep. So I'm showing him what it's about versus what people be talking about. I'm showing him this. Yes. Right. Through life, the challenges of life, the importance of taking care of yourself through the challenges of life, the importance of connecting to your ancestors and spirit guides through challenges of life. The importance of clearing out emotions and cleansing and shielding your energy. Yep. So, yep. Awakened creativity. Look at that. I'm teaching him that when we do this, creativity comes natural as a byproduct. We won't have to steal. We won't have to steal we won't have to violate other people. Yeah. I'm also teaching him creative ways of healing the body. Yep. This is why I'm teaching him about manifestation, about writing things out. Okay. Yeah, and it came out. Oh, I like this. It says cleanse and shield your energy, and boom. It says your authentic vibration. Oh, this is the lesson of the century. I'm teaching him the importance of that and that it's okay for him to be his authentic self too and not be made to feel like, okay, I got to conform so that they feel better. I have to act this way or I have to say this and do this so that they feel better. See, as a child, I lived my life that way, but I don't want him living his that way. He shouldn't need to have to worry about managing my emotions as his parent, saying the things I need him to say so that I'll be okay. He needs to feel like he can be his authentic self because he equally matters. Yeah. 
Absolutely. None of us was taught this, by the way, see. We was taught, we showed up talking about the Bible, church, Reiki, you know, depending on our background. We were taught, yeah, we had that all day, all day. High vibrational living. But if we were to be honest, if any of us were to be <laughs> truly honest, Yeah, this is why I tell him so much. I'm helping him here. This is my creative way to make progress, yeah. Look at that butterfly wings in the background. Looks like, it looks like butterfly. It may not be a butterfly. That may just be what I want to see. But it's like transformation. Okay, divine love, how to connect to divine love, source, light, energy, and how to align that within. Yeah, inner guidance. I'm teaching them how to find love within by loving the self, psychic senses, positivity, personal development. Okay, so... If you're a parent out nope. there and you're, you know, you feel like you resonate as being on some kind of awakening journey and all that, and you may have regrets or you may feel, you know, your earlier parenting years were like crap, like I say about my own, <laughs> right? I'm like, damn, bitch. You know what I'm saying? Uh, know that you can change that. Okay? Just... It's one day at a time, one step at a time. But it's the simple things, too. We have to be these things. It's not just about us Googling something and, and reading something else and then 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 quoting something else and quoting something else and quoting, quoting. It's about being and then applying when we're frustrated, because see, what is all of our stuff's worth collected if that's about it? <clears throat> it's just some, some factoids and some information. And we put it up, bitch, boom, bitch. Okay, uh, but are you being that though? Like, you know what I'm saying? Are you applying this? <laughs> like, that's where I'm at with it. Because it's not going to always be easy. You're going to be challenged. Like, <gasps> then we have to do the deep breath, bitch. He watches me do this. He watches me earth. He watches me go outside. He see, he see me do it. I've tried to get him to do this with me, and I'm still not successful. <laughs> so I have to work with his energy in another way. Because I was trying, I was like, come on, Darrell. Come with your mother. Come, let's come stand outside. Get some sunshine. You know, outside of taking him on walks or hikes. But I'll try, I try... To get him to take his shoes off. <laughs> He's like, girl. He like, nope. He'd be all frustrated with that. He's like, I'm not doing that, mom. I'm like, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. There's nothing gonna bother you. He's like, I don't wanna do that, mom. Okay. So I'll just let it be because I'm not, again, I'm not going to force. Okay. Sometimes I do be trying to force certain shit and then my team helps me like, okay, just, you're a master, you're a Reiki master, so you know how to do energy. You know how to um, use distant symbols on behalf of his higher self. If his higher self see fit, they'll allocate it. You know how to do this, so you don't have to necessarily intrude him when he's not wanting something, Okay. So this is another way of teaching respect because most of us came up with like use your property, you're a slave, essentially. Because you're a child and who are you to have emotions and shit? <laughs> who are you to have feelings and shit? <laughs> who the hell are you? <laughs> and that's so wrong. That's so wrong. Because um, they're people, okay? They're beings to... And, and, you know, newsflash, we the ones decided to have sex. <laughs> newsflash, we the one did that. We did that. We wanted to have sex. We decided we wanted kids. We decided we wanted to squeeze churn out. You know what I'm saying? Those were our decisions. 
but they're still an individual. They're not little slaves or little, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, so love on your kids. That's all I'm going to tell you. And I'm not talking about just trying to clear your guilty conscious type energy. I'm talking about really giving it all you have to be a good parent. And I want to even speak as far as to even those of us that our children are adults. Okay? Like, it doesn't stop there. We want to be decent parents. Okay? We want to be loving, decent of our, of our offspring here. We want to change all this toxic shit. I know my grandmother will have a lot to say about this. Oh, yeah. I don't have to talk to her about that. I know she don't have a lot to say because I know where she came from. I know. I know the truth. Um, and this is what I'm here to break. This has to stop. It has to. Using kids, you know, triangulating. Please don't be that way. Don't use your kids against one another. Don't do that. Don't be that kind of a parent. Don't triangulate your children for your own personal gain. Don't be the source of sibling, sibling rivalries amongst your own children. You don't want to do that. You really don't want to do that. You want to heal and break those generational curses because those are the curses. I just want to speak on that. See, that's what the real curse is. Those are the curses. Secrets, family toxic secrets, those are the curses. And until somebody get brave enough to deal with it, that kind of shit will keep going and going even long after we expire from this physical body. You can start now. Some may say damage has been done. That shouldn't really stop you though. Because you can make the difference still even if it's a small difference. Because it's who you are today and who you're becoming each day. Only today, today, now. Now, now, now is the point of attraction. Now. It takes time, sure. I know that when I leave physically, my, my goal is that these frequencies will be left. There's going to be a mark that's left behind me. This is why I care about, I'm mindful of what I do. Because I want that to be, because whenever the day is, bitch, with it, oh, blow me blow. It's time for oh, blow me blow to go on to the next phase in the game. You know what I'm saying? Not here in the physical no more, but doing some other shit in the ethers. I want that to be what's sticking for my son. And whatever else is to come. What do you want to be remembered and stick if you were to die right now? Do you want to just be remembered as someone who wanted to look a certain part in life but didn't want to really fulfill it? Or you want to be remembered as a true warrior, game changer that stood for love, justice, peace at all costs in the name of love and balance is that what you want to be remembered as? Or do you want to be remembered as a sellout? 
if there was anybody writing our stories, the truth about them, not the abridged version that we only want people to... <laughs> if there was anybody writing our stories, what would you want them to really say? Oh, Bloomy Bloom. Example, do I want them to be like, Bloomy, also known as Brandy, wanted things so bad in life, she did a whole lot of unmentionable shit to a whole lot of people just so she can have a house, a car, fame, fortune, notoriety, only to have it destroy her in the end of her life. Or do I want to be remembered as Bloomy, also known as Brandy? Rose to the challenge of her own awakening. Dealt with her traumas, generational ancestral woundings, owned up and faced her shadow, worked diligently to become a high vibrational person to become love, to be love sincerely and truly. One that fought for justice for the vulnerable population, the unseen, the unheard, to the death with grace, elegance, sophistication, Which one of those would you want to be? I decided the latter. Because I decided that that's what matters. 